Good morning, Oil for My Journey uh, listeners. I'm your reader, James Sutherland, uh, reading Jeremiah 50 through to the plane. Jeremiah chapters 50 through 52. So grab the word of God and uh, let's pray before we receive his word. Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for uh, the day ahead of, uh, ahead of us uh, that you have already appointed um, our steps and are aware of all the relationships that we will encounter. Thank you uh, that you have uh, given us the opportunity to pursue you and share you in those relationships through our work, through our family, through our friendships. Lord, thank you for the history of your word and being able to look at uh, books like Jeremiah and how you walked with your people and uh, in grace, mercy, and also judgment. In judgment we pray. <clears throat> Jeremiah 50 Judgment on Babylon. A word that the Lord spoke concerning Babylon, concerning the land of the Chaldeans, by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare among the nations and proclaim. Set up a banner and proclaim, conceal it not, and say, Babylon is taken, Bel is put to shame, Merodach is dismayed, her images are put to shame, her idols are dismayed. For out of the north a nation has come up against her, which shall make her land a desolation, and none shall dwell in it, both man and beast shall flee away. In those days and in that time declares the Lord, the people of Israel and the people of Judah shall come together, weeping as they come. They shall seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion with faces turned toward it, saying, Come, let us join ourselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant that will never be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray, turning them away on the mountains. From mountain to hill they have gone. They have forgotten their fold. All who found them have devoured them, and their enemies have said, We are not guilty, for they have sinned against the Lord. Their habitation of righteousness, the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Flee from the midst of Babylon and go out to the land of the Chaldeans, and be as male goats before the flock. For behold, I am stirring up and bringing up against Babylon a gathering of great nations from the north country, and they shall array themselves against her. From there she shall be taken. Their arrows are like skilled, like a skilled warrior who does not return empty-handed. Chaldea shall be plundered. All who plunder her shall be sated, declares the Lord. Though you rejoice, though you exult, O plunderers of my heritage, though you frolic like a heifer in the pasture, and neigh like stallions, your mother shall be utterly shamed, and she who bore you shall be disgraced. Behold, she shall be the last of the nations, a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord she shall not be inhabited, but shall be in utter desolation. Everyone who passes by Babylon will, shall be appalled, and hiss because of all her wounds. Set yourselves in array against Babylon all around, all you who bend the bow shoot at her spare no arrows for she has sinned against the lord raise a shout against all around her she has she has surrendered her bulwarks have fallen her walls are thrown down for this is the vengeance of the lord take vengeance on her do to her as she has done cut off from babylon the sower and the one who handles the sickle in the time of harvest because of the sword of the oppressor, everyone shall turn to his own people, and everyone shall flee to his own land. Israel is a hunted sheep, driven away by lions. First the king of Assyria devoured him, and now at last Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Babylon has gnawed his bones. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing punishment on the king of Babylon and his land. As I have punished the king of Assyria, I will restore Israel to his pasture, and he shall feed on Carmel and in Bashan, 
and his desire shall be satisfied on the hills of Ephraim and in Gilead. In those days and in that time, declares the Lord, iniquity shall be sought in Israel, and there shall be none, and sin in Judah, and none shall be found. For I will pardon those whom I leave as remnant. Go up against the land of Marathah, and against the inhabitants of Pekad. Kill and devote them to destruction, declares the Lord, and do all that I have commanded you. The noise of battle is in the land, and great destruction. How the hammer of the whole earth is cut down and broken. How Babylon has become a horror among the nations. I, sned a, I set a snare for you, and you were taken, O Babylon, and you did not know it. You were found and caught, because you opposed the Lord. The Lord has opened his armory and brought out the weapons of his wrath. For the Lord God of hosts has a work to do in the land of the Chaldeans. Come against her from every quarter, open her granaries, pile her up like heaps of grain, and devote her to destruction. Let nothing be left of her. Kill all her bulls. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe to them, for their day has come, the time of their punishment. A voice, they flee and escape the land of Babylon, to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God. God, vengeance for his temple. Summon archers against Babylon, all those who bend the bow, and camp around her. Let no one escape. Repay her according to her deeds. Do to her according all that she has done, for she has proudly defied the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Therefore her young men shall fall in her squares, and all her soldiers shall be destroyed on that day, declares the Lord. Behold, I am against you, O proud one, declares the Lord God of hosts, for your day has come, the time when I will punish you. The proud one shall stumble and fall, with none to raise him up, and I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it will devour all that is around him. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the people of Israel are oppressed, and the people of Judah with them. All who took them captive have held them fast. They refuse to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong, the Lord of hosts is his name. He will surely plead their cause that he may give rest to the earth, but unrest to the inhabitants of Babylon. A sword against the Chaldeans, declares the Lord, and against the inhabitants of Babylon, and against her officials and her wise men. A sword against the diviners, that they may become fools. A sword against her warriors, that they may be destroyed. A sword against her horses, and against her chariots and against all the foreign troops in her midst, that they may become women, a sword against all her treasures, that they may be plundered, a drought against her waters, that they may be dried up. For it is a land of images, and they are mad over idols. Therefore wild beasts shall dwell with hyenas in Babylon. The ostrich ostriches shall dwell in her. She shall never again have people nor be inhabited for all generations. As when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring cities, declares the Lord, so no man shall dwell there, and no son of man shall sojourn in her. Behold, a people comes from the north, a mighty nation and many kings are stirring from the farthest parts of the earth. They laid hold of bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. The sound of them is like the roaring of the sea. They ride on horses, arrayed as a man for battle against you, O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon heard the report of them, and his hands fell helpless. Anguish seized him, pain as of a woman in labor. Behold, like a lion coming up from the thicket of Jordan against a perennial pasture, I will suddenly make them run away from her, and I will appoint over her whomever I choose. For who is like me? Who will summon me? What shepherd can stand before me? Therefore hear the plan that the Lord has made against Babylon, and the purposes that he has formed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the little ones of their flock shall be dragged away. Surely their fold shall be appalled at their fate. At the sound of the capture of Babylon, the earth shall tremble, and her cry shall be heard among the nations. Jeremiah 51, The Utter Destruction of Babylon Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will stir up the spirit of a destroyer against Babylon, 
against the inhabitants of Lebkamai. And I will send to Babylon Menowers, and they shall win over her, and they shall empty her land. Then they come against her from every side on the day of trouble. Let not the archer bend his bow, and let him not stand up in his armor. Spare not her young men, devote to destruction all her army. They shall fall down slain in the land of the Chaldeans, and wounded in her streets. For Israel and Judah have not been forsaken by their God, the Lord of hosts. But the land of the Chaldeans is full of guilt against the Holy One of Israel. Flee from the midst of Babylon, let everyone save his life. Be not cut off in her punishment, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. The repayment he is rendering her, Babylon, was a golden cup in the Lord's hand, making all the earth drunken. Nations drank of her wine, therefore the nations went mad. Suddenly Babylon has fallen and been broken. Wail for her. Take balm for her pain. Perhaps she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she was not healed. Forsake her and let us go, each to his own country. For her judgment has reached up to heaven, and has been lifted up even to the skies. The Lord has brought out our vindication. Come, let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Sharpen the arrows, take up the shields. The Lord has stirred up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, because the purpose concerning Babylon is to destroy it. For that is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance for his temple. Set up a standard against the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. For the Lord has both planned and done what he spoke concerning the inhabitants of Babylon. O you who dwell by many waters, rich in treasures, your end has come. The threat of your life is cut. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself. Surely I will fill you with men, as many as locusts, and, that, and they shall raise the shout of victory over you. It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. When he utters his voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens, and he makes the mist rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain. He brings forth the wind from his storehouses. Every man is stupid and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols, for his images are false, and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of delusion. At the time of their punishment, they shall perish. Not like bees is he who is the portion of Jacob. He is the one who formed all things, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. You are my hammer and weapon of war. With you I break nations and pieces. With you I destroy kingdoms. With you I break in pieces the horse and his rider. You, you, with you I break in pieces the chariot and the charioteer. With you I break in pieces man and woman. With you I break in pieces the old man and the youth. With you I break in pieces the young man and the young woman. With you I break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. With you I break in pieces the farmer and his team. With you I break in pieces governors and commanders. I will repay Babylon and all the inhabitants of Chaldea before your very eyes for all the evil that they have done in Zion, declares the Lord. Behold, I am against you, O destroying mountain, declares the Lord, which destroys the whole earth. I will stretch out my hand against you and roll you down from the crags, make you a burnt mountain. No stone shall be taken from you for a corner, and no stone for a foundation, but you shall be a perpetual waste, declares the Lord. Set up a standard on the earth, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations for war against her, summon against her the kingdoms, Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz, appoint a marshal against her, bring up horses like bristling locusts, Prepare the nations for war against her. The kings of the, of the Medes with their governors, deputies in every land under their dominion. The land trembles and writhes in pain, for the Lord's purposes against Babylon stand, to make the land of Babylon a desolation. Without inhabitant, the warriors of Babylon have ceased fighting. They remain in their strongholds. Their strength has failed. They have become women. Her dwellings are on fire. Her bars are broken. One runner runs to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to tell the king of Babylon that his city is taken on every side. The fords have been seized, marshes are burned with fire, and the soldiers are in panic. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, 
The daughter of Babylon is like a thre threshing floor. At the time when it is tried, yet a little while, and the time of her harvest will come. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has devoured me. He has crushed me. He has made me an empty vessel. He has swallowed me like a monster. He has filled his stomach with my delicacies. He has rinsed me out. The violence done to me and my kinsmen be upon Babylon. Let the inhabitants of, of Zion say, My blood be upon the inhabitants of Chaldea. Let Jerusalem say, Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will plead your curse and take vengeance for you. I will dry up her sea and make her a fountain dry, and Babylon shall become a heap of ruins, the haunt of jackals, a horror and a hissing without inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions, they shall growl like lions' cubs. While they are inflamed, I will prepare them a feast and make them drunk, and they may become merry. Then sleep in perpetual sleep and not wake, declares the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams and male goats. How Babylon is taken, the praise of the whole earth seized. How Babylon has become a horror amongst the nations. The sea has come up on Babylon, she has covered with its tumultuous waves. Her cities have become a horror, a land of drought and desert, a land in which no one dwells, and through which no son of man passes. And I will punish Bel in Babylon and take out of his mouth what he has swallowed. The nations shall no longer flow to him, the wall of Babylon has fallen. Go out of the midst of her, my people, let everyone save his life from the fierce anger of the Lord. Let not your heart faint, and be not fearful, at the report heard in the land. When a report comes in one year, and afterward a report in another year, and violence is in the land, and ruler is against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days are coming when I will punish the images of Babylon. Her whole land shall be put to shame, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. And the heavens and the earth and all that is in them shall sing for joy over Babylon. For the destroyer shall come against them out of the north, declares the Lord. Babylon must fall for the slain of Israel, just as for Babylon have fallen the slain of all the earth. You have escaped from the sword. Go, do not stand still. Remember the Lord from far away, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are put to shame, for we have heard reproach. Dishonor has covered our face. For foreigners have come into the holy places of the Lord's house. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will execute judgment upon her images and through all her land. The wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify her strong height, yet destroyers would come from me against her, declares the Lord. A voice, a cry from Babylon, the noise of great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans. For the Lord is laying Babylon waste and stilling her mighty voice. Her waves roar like many waters. The noise of their voice is raised. For a destroyer has come upon Babylon. Her warriors are taken. Their bows are broken in pieces. For the Lord is a God of recompense. He will surely repay. I will make drunk her officials and her wise men, her governors, her commanders, and her warriors. They shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, declares the Lord. His name is the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, The broad wall of Babylon shall be leveled to the ground, and her high gates shall be burned with fire. The peoples labor for nothing, and the nations weary themselves only for fire. The word that Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, son of Mahasiah, when he went with Zedekiah king of Judah to Babylon, in the fourth year of his reign, Sarariah was the quartermaster. Jeremiah wrote in a book all the disaster that should come upon Babylon, all of these words that are written concerning Babylon. Jeremiah said to Sariah, When you come to Babylon, see that you read all these words and say, O Lord, you have said concerning this place that you will cut it off, so that nothing shall dwell in it, neither man nor beast, and it shall be desolate forever. When you finish reading this book, tie a stone to it, and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates, and say, Thus shall Babylon sink, to arise no more, because of the disaster that I am bringing upon her. It shall become exhausted. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. <clears throat> Jeremiah 52, The Fall of Jerusalem Recounted. 
Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king. He reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according all that Jehoiakim had done. For because of the anger of the Lord, it came to the point in Jerusalem and Judah that he cast them out from his presence. Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. In the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came with all his army against Jerusalem and laid siege to it. They built siege works all around it. So the city was besieged till the eleventh year of the king Zeb 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 Zedekiah. <clears throat> on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine was so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. Then a breach was made in the city, and all the men of war fled and went out from the city by night by the way of a gate in the two walls by the king's garden. The Chaldeans were around the city, and they went in the direction of the Arabah. The army of the Chaldeans pursued the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. They captured the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah in the land of Hamath, and he passed sentence on him. The king of Babylon slaughtered the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and also slaughtered all the officials of Judah at Riblah. He put out the eyes of Zedekiah and bound him in chains. And the king of Babylon took him to Babylon and put him in prison till the day of his death. The Temple Burn. In the fifth month, on the tenth day of the month, that was the nineteenth year of the king Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the bodyguard, who served the king of Babylon, entered Jerusalem, and he burned the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every great house he burned down. All the army of the Chaldeans, who were with the captain of the guard, broke down all the walls around Jerusalem. And Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive some of the poorest of the people and the rest of the people who were left in the city the deserters who had deserted the king of Babylon, together with the rest of the artisans. But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left some of the poorest of the land to be vine dressers and plowmen. And the pillars of the bronze that were in the house of the Lord, and the stands and the bronze sea that were in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans broke in pieces and carried all the bronze to Babylon. And they took it away, the pots and the shovels and the snuffers, the basins and the dishes for incense and all the vessels of bronze uh, used in the temple service. All the small bowls and the fire pans and the basins and the pots and the lampstands and the dishes for incense and the bowls for drink offerings. What was of gold the captain of the guard took away as gold and what was of silver as silver. As for the two pillars, the one sea, the twelve bronze bulls that were under the sea, and the stands which Solomon the king had made for the house of the Lord, the bronze of all these things were beyond weight. As for the pillars, the height of one pillar was 18 cubits. Its circumference was 12 cubits, and its thickness were four fingers, and it was hollow. On it, a capital of bronze. The height of one of the one capital was five cubits. Network and pomegranates, all of bronze, were all around the capital. And the second pillar had the same with pomegranates. There were 96 pomegranates on the sides. All the pomegranates were a hundred upon the network all around. The people were exiled to Babylon. And the captain of the guard took Sariah, the chief priest, and Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three keepers of the threshold. And from the city he took an officer who had been in command of the men of war, and seven men of the king's council who were found in the city and the secretary of the commander of the army who mustered the people of the land, sixty men of the people of the land who were found in the midst of the city. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took them and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. The king of Babylon struck them down and put them to death, Riblah, in the land of Hamath. So Judah was taken into exile out of its land. This is the number of the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive. In the seventh year, 3,023 Judeans. In the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away captive from Jerusalem 832 persons. In the 23rd year of Nebuchadnezzar, 
Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captives of the Judeans, 745%. All the persons were 4,600. Boakin was released from prison. And in the 37th year of the exile of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the 12th month, in the 25th day of the month, evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, graciously, graciously freed Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and brought him out. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a seat above the seats of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiakim put off his prison garments, and every day of his life he dined regularly at the king's table. And for his allowance, a regular allowance was given him by the king, according to his daily needs, the day of his death, as long as he lived. <clears throat> We're so thankful for God's word and the history of God's people. And um, a look back in that history of what happens um, when, when we disobey God. And um, as a people, corporate and away from him, um, how he allows his judgment, uh, using other nations that that turn their back to the one creator, but are aware of him, um, people uh, for the rebellion. Uh, there is a, a warning. Um, Warning in relation to our relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, as we see culture uh, around us and countries and people around us turning their back to our Creator, uh, their Creator who loves them, is uh, saddened by their disobedience. And uh, we all have to answer for our sin, and um, that makes our with Christ so intimate uh, when we are heartbroken by um, the wrong that we do as well as the wrong that is against us uh, and that the hurt that we carry is against us and our sin but that leads to the great redemptive work of the Catholic cross and I pray if you're watching this you can be so and believe on him as your savior for all the world and that's my prayer this morning thank you for allowing me to read the you and uh, have a pleasant day uh, as you meditate on the oil for our journey